All right, so Pablo's has a new creature living in it. We are going to go over. Creature's actually in here. I'll get some video. It's on its cool side hide. I don't think we can see in there. It's a little too dark. Anyhow, this is the final result. This is a reptile habitat from doobieroaches.com. This is the 36 inch by 12 by 18 enclosure. And in this video, we're gonna show you how I made my background. Here is the overall finished result. Hot hide, water bowl, cool hide, plenty of logs to adventure on. I've also got some fake leaves over here. Uh, I'll have a video at the end showing the snake, but um, I did not have the plant in the enclosure at the time. I went ahead and installed the plant with an extra log mounted to it. So in this video, we will show you how to make this Terminator foam and 3D print background. Also, as a side note, I am very happy with the enclosure from DoobieRoaches.com. It's got a screen top, which I have most of it covered up. And I've got a heat lamp, night light, regular standard, uh, I think it's UVA. But it's a very good enclosure. There's plenty of other build videos on there that you can watch them build it. Not too complicating. I think me and Xander did it in about half an hour. Hi guys. Today what do you got there? I got a wiggle mat. Yeah. They had a uh, trunk or treating at church today. Yeah, and somebody gave me the wiggle mat. Somebody gave Xander that fine piece of machinery. Did you put that together all by yourself? No. I think they told me Mama and the folks. Mama actually helped them. All right, what are we doing? So, here in the near future. We're making a bag steak cake. Anyways, move. Here in the new future, I'm going to get myself a new critter for my Christmas present. I picked out my own Christmas present. It's early Christmas present. It's actually two days away from Halloween. And I'm already working on my Christmas present. Okay? So we're going to get a creature. And right now we're working on a decoration. It's a sink. It's a sink. What decoration, that? yes. Decoration for the snake cage. You're going to have to wait till the end of the video and I will possibly show you what kind of snake we got since he spilled the beans. I wasn't going to tell you, but whatever. You ruined it. Okay, so you go on YouTube, there's lots of videos on reptile, back wall, decor, decoration, and background. And there's um, lots of uh, okay, wiggles. Quit talking now. Wiggles. Quit yapping. Rear background for a reptile room reptile cage you'll see a lot of rock features that have some leaves and stuff we're gonna mix it up a little bit we're gonna do it a little bit different than everybody else because we're special like that so everybody is either directly doing to the glass or the plastic of the enclosure with uh, or they're doing it onto a foam board we're not going to use foam I've got a piece of plastic here 
called UHMW. This is a quarter inch thick. It is two foot by one foot. I'm actually going to trim it down to 10 inches. How many foot? 10 inches yeah. by two foot. The enclosure is actually going to be 12 <coughs> by two. How so many we're just going to make this fit in there. I don't know. So we're going to trim this down with the old jigsaw. That way we can for sure put it into the enclosure. The way I'm building this, a lot of those enclosures that they're doing the background are, are pretty much permanent. Once you put it in there, you can't take it out. Five. So we're getting a PVC, five. PVC, PVC cage, That's and five. we're going to make it where this will come out of the cage in case I have to take it out for cleaning purposes or whatever purposes. Maybe we want to change it up. So I'm going to cut this to 10 inches wide. If the supervisor will be quiet and let me get to work. <laughs> Safety first. Let's not lose our fingers cutting this either. Here we are with our 10 inch by 2 foot piece of plastic. We're going to sand this down this edge here. This whole thing is slick. I'm going to scuff it up a little bit make it rougher so we have stuff to adhere to use this hand sander it's got a hundred grit on here are sanders intimidating not really not really that scary Looks like it could rain. We gotta get this done. Here's what we're looking like. We've scuffed up our board, plastic board. As you can see, we've got all these 3D printed parts that we printed on our 3D printer. It's probably about 20 hours worth of printing all together. I think each one of these took almost five hours, just those pieces. So I got a couple more pieces I gotta go. We're going to glue those down clean this up with the alcohol, uh, aired it down with the hose, air hose, get all the loose stuff off of here, it's scuffed up. I scuffed up the back of these. I'm gonna put glue on those. Got a little center line there, kind of a center line there so we can get this thing level. Battery's almost dead on this. Using some Loctite plastic glue. This is Loctite 416. This does not have to be perfect perfect. Gonna get us a good amount of glue on here. We are not worried if any of this glue seeps out at this point in time. Glue us down, hold it for just a second. And move on to the next couple pieces. Careful not to get any of this in your beard. That would be bad. All right, last piece just printed.
I don't know if I showed, I got four holes here drilled, pretty symmetrical, and we'll screw those holes directly to the back of the PVC cage. That's the nice thing about PVC cage. Just the front is glass, the rest is plastic, so you can drill through it. We'll drill through and put bolts on the back. If we ever need to take this out to clean it or whatever, we just gotta pull them four nuts off and pull the whole thing out. That's gonna be it for the day, let this cure. We'll come back in a day or two and do the next part. Alrighty then, this is set up for a little bit. A couple days, I'm ready for the next step. It's all glued down on our board here. Next thing we're gonna do is take some of this great stuff, because it's great. We're gonna go around here and texturize this board. We don't want it all flat. We wanna add some dimension to it. So let's see what this thing does. Now this stuff is gonna expand pretty good, so I'm gonna come in with my hand, kind of flatten it out so it doesn't just cover the whole thing. We don't wanna cover up what we've glued down here, so I'm gonna go over here to a spot that, just out in the open and see what she does. Let's go around these edges, exactly. I want to kind of feather it in here. So I'm going over this whole thing with the wire brush. Um, I'm gonna use a little small hand one to get in the little crevices. This here is really glossy and smooth. And for the next step we use, you don't want that glossy. We're gonna, we wanna scuff this up. Um, some of this area over here where it's covering up too much stuff, I'll probably take this and get in there pretty deep. Expose this a little more, expose some of these parts. Get a good scuff on here for this. Uh, we're gonna use what's called uh, dry lock probably either that or grout but I think dry lock and so you want it scuffed up so that stuff will adhere to the great foam great stuff foam Be sure to wear a uh, mask, keep this stuff out of your lungs. All right, here we are, day 374 of this project, it feels like. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. We have actually got the creature in its enclosure. So we're running behind on this back wall, but that's okay, that's fine. So here's what we're working with. I got this all cleaned up to my liking. All foamed, all cleaned, all scuffed. This is what we purchased from Lowe's. This dry lock original concrete and masonry waterproofer. This is what you use on these backgrounds. And I had to buy a whole gallon. This is almost $40 for this thing. I would have preferred to have gotten a quart for $11, which would have been plenty for this. But no, nobody sells a quart, so we gotta buy the whole gallon. Uh, hopefully this stuff lasts a good long time, in case I ever do decide to do something else. So we're gonna shake this up, and we're gonna put a couple coats of this on with some cheapo brushes over the whole entire thing, soak it up.
I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing here. I'm finding easier to do than trying to put like a light coat on here and get it in there. I am gooping this stuff up pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. And just chunking it in there. Putting it down there in there as thick as I can. Getting in every little crevice I can. I'm putting it on there thick in one spot and then come back and brush out that excess. That seems to be working better than trying to just do light coats a little bit at a time. Just chunk it on there, get it in there. Get this foam to soak it in and then come back and do some fine brushing that excess away. I'm finding that to work best. All right, this first coat is, I'm gonna call dry enough to go ahead and do the second coat. I'm gonna leave all the plastic pieces white. I'm just gonna do one coat on those. Those are white, those are plastic. They don't need to soak in any more of that. Um, and I'm gonna try something. This stuff, this dry lock is called Tentable. So we're gonna take some black acrylic. That's just what I had. That's supposed to be reptile safe anyways. And I'm gonna try to tint this with some black because I want all my background to be blackish, grayish, darkish. We'll leave all the plastic pieces white. Plastic pieces white. So we're gonna go for that. So there you have it. We got it all coated. Yeah, I did get some on these plastic parts, but that's fine. We can come back and fine tune those with a little brush, white. Essentially what we're going for is this Terminator parts coming out of like a concrete lava rock. And we'll do the eyeballs red and make them look like they've been sitting there for hundreds of years and maybe reactivating or something. I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna kinda texturize some of this a little bit just to give it some more dimension and let this dry probably a couple days before we come back and do some more detail work thank you for watching all right this is set overnight See that? I've got a bucket of some acrylic paints. Some oranges and reds, a little bit of brown, some white to clean up this mess where we got it, the uh, gray. Got these synthetic sponges. We're gonna try to make this look like, kind of like lava rock. So let's see what we can do with a couple different colors. I'm going to try to put a little bit of brown just for a base. I don't need a lot of brown. All right, let's see how this looks. So we put just a little bit of brown down as our base. I think next we're gonna go for some red. Go a little bit heavier on the red than what we would get on the brown.
orange. What are you doing? Anyway. All right, last color we're gonna do is just a little bit of yellow. That look lavish, lavish ish. So, I'm going to mix up some white, slightly grayish paint to come over these uh, Terminator parts. Uh, silver would be better, but I don't have silver, silver ish. So, we're going to go for a light grayish with some shadowing, etc. Try to make these stand out from the lava gray. I wish this was a little more silvery, but it's going to be what it is. We've only got one thing left to do, and that's paint some eyeballs red. We're gonna call that a day. I'm gonna let all this cure up, dry up. Would you quit whining, Blue? And we're gonna come back in a couple days when I actually have the clear. I'm using a water-based uh, polyurethane paint, so it's non-toxic. Essentially, we're gonna do a clear coat over this whole thing. It should really make it pop even more And then we'll let that cure and we'll install it into the snake cage All right We are going to cover this with Verithane ultimate polyurethane water-based Clear coat. This is crystal clear. Are we crystal clear on that? It's getting a little bit dark out, getting a little bit cool out, but I'm going to do this out here due to ventilation reasons. Let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll take it back into the shipping container where it is toastier. Gonna hit it from different angles, do a thin coat, come back in a few minutes and do another coat. 
gonna go put the camera down now. All right, I went ahead and installed the background off camera, but essentially before we did the foaming, I don't know if I got that on camera, I drilled four holes through the, the uh, UHMW sheet and the enclosure. Now do that at your own risk. This enclosure is what they call PVC, However, it does feel like it could possibly crack if you weren't careful with it. It's almost like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but it does look like it could crack if you're not careful. And then at the end we ran screws with large washers on the back. All right, so here is the new critter. Let's see if we can get her stretched out here. This is, I named her Morgana. This is a inchy lesser 66% het exanthic ball python. If that means anything to you. Got her off of Morph Market from a uh, breeder called AK Morphs. So I want to do a little bit more with the uh, enclosure. I want to put some fake plants in there but uh, this video is running a little long and I'm ready to edit it and get it done so we are going to call it a day Morgana is hungry she's ready to be fed so we're gonna try to get some video footage of her in the enclosure with our background Terminator background made out of 3d printing and spray foam and paint 